everyone and welcome to day seven of our story advent and today our story is going to be mr tickle and the dragon who i wonder what happens to mr tickle mr tickle was having a very good day 21 people well and truly tickled a very good day indeed but when he arrived home he could not believe his eyes. I can't believe my eyes, he said to himself. Somebody has burnt my house down. Mr. Tickle's house was gone. All that was left was a smoking and charred pile at the end of his garden path. There was more smoke rising from the end of the lane. Mr. Tickle went to investigate. The smoke was coming from Mr. Bunny's shoe car, or rather it had been his car, but all that remained was a burnt shoelace. Mr. Tickle could see another spiral smoke in the distance. This time it was Mr. Clever's house, and, a, and very nearly Mr. Clever by the looks of him. <sighs> I just got out in time, said Mr. Clever. There can only be one culprit. It must have been a... But Mr. Tickle did not wait to hear what it must have been. He had spotted the signs of another fire and was determined to follow the trail. It was a long trail which led from Mr. Chatterbox's burnt out phone box to Farmer's Field, Burnt Down Barn, and on through wilder, bleaker lands, up into the mountains. Soon, it began to get dark, but Mr. Tickle continued climbing higher and higher. Darkness had fallen when he had saw a bright light. In the distance, there was a cave emitting a red glow. Suddenly, Mr. Tickle did not feel very brave. Suddenly, he wished he had stayed to hear what Mr. Clever had would have said. Mr. Tickle decided to wait until the morning. He curled up under a bush and wrapped his arms around himself three times to keep warm. Mr. T Tickle fell into a surprisingly deep sleep and the sun was up when he woke and he heard a rustling in the bushes. Mr. Tickle opened an eye. The bush rustled again. I know you're in there, rumbled a deep voice. Come on, show yourself. <gasps> Mr. Tickle cautious, cautiously poked his head through the top of the bush and stood blinking in the bright sunlight. He was quite unprepared for the sight that his eyes met. He was standing face to face with a dragon. A huge dragon at that. A huge dragon with smoke curling from his nostrils. Mr. Tickle gasped. <gasps> Hello, said Mr. Tickle in a tiny voice. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to give me a good reason why I shouldn't burn you to a crisp bellowed the dragon. And then I'm going to burn you to a crisp. Mr. Tickle gulped. Mr. Tickle needed to think fast. He realized his arms were hidden. Quick as the flash, he sent one of his true extraordinarily long arms snaking through the bush and under the dragon's belly. Mr. Tickle flexed his fingers and hoped beyond everything that the dragon was ticklish. The dragon instantly crumbled into a giggling, laughing tangle on the ground. Ha ha ha! Roared the dragon. He he he! Wheezed the dragon. Ho ho ho! Boomed the dragon. Stop it! Stop it! He cried. I'll stop tickling. If you promise to stop burning things, said Mr. Tickle. Anything, 
Anything, I'll promise anything, pleaded the dragon. Mr. Tickle stopped tickling and looked the dragon squarely in the eye. What you need to learn, said Mr. Tickle, is to put your fire breath to good use. You should use your extraordinary skills to make people happy. I'll show you. The dragon lay down on the ground and Mr. Tickle hopped on his back. Then the dragon shook out his great wings and took off, circling high over the mountains, swooping down to the distant valleys. They flew lower and lower, passing over barns and cottages. Look, cried Mr. Tickle. It's little Miss Splendid's house. I have an idea for your good deed. Mr. Tickle and the dragon stood beside Little Miss Splendid's swimming pool. It is too cold today to swim in Little Miss Splendid's pool, said Mr. Tickle. Do you think you could do anything about that? The dragon thought for a moment. Then he took a deep breath and breathed out through his nostrils. Flames licked across the surface of the swimming pool. In no time at all, the pool was steaming. Little Miss Splendid was delighted. Mr. Tickle and the dragon and Little Miss Splendid had a very enjoyable swim. In fact, the dragon had a very enjoyable day. He melted the ice on Mr. Bump's path and Mr. Bump couldn't have been happier as most mornings he usually slipped up and bumped his head. He warmed up Mr. Forgetful's cup of tea, which he had made at breakfast time and had forgotten to drink. Mr. Forgetful was delighted. He doesn't normally get to drink hot tea. And Mr. Greedy was very impressed when the dragon cooked 15 sausages at once. By the end of the day, the dragon had a big glowing smile across his face. Do you know what? He boomed cheerfully. I really feel good. Mr. Tickle grinned and then he reached out his extraordinarily long arms and tickled the dragon. And now I do too, he laughed. Thank you for joining me for our story and I hope that you have a lovely rest of your evening. Good night.